He will send someone to correct you. And when you recognize that that correction is from the Lord, then it's important for you to listen and to obey. And such was the case of a man who was beloved of God, and his name was King David of Israel. He was a man who was well versed concerning the commandments and the laws of God. Yet he was a man who during one period in his life, he allowed himself to be seduced by sin. The sins of adultery and murder. Yes, even great men of God, if they are not watchful and prayerful, may find themselves being susceptible to the temptations of sin. And in 2 Samuel, in the 11th and 12th chapters, we see how Satan was able to penetrate into the spiritual armor of David by appealing to and providing a avenue by which David could satisfy his lustful and fleshly desires for sex. And what made it so, what made it so displeasing to God was the fact that the object of his lustful desires was the wife of one of his junior officers in his army. And because of David's power and position of authority, there was very little opposition in seducing the wife of the officer in question, Uriah. Yet David knew that what he did was wrong, for he knew about God's commandment about adultery. Yet David did it anyway, and that made his action a sin. And momentarily, David forgot that the all-seeing eyes of God sees everything. And King David became aware of that fact when God sent his prophet Nathan to go to King David and expose his sin unto David and to the people of Israel. And this illicit affair that David had with Bathsheba enlightened David to the fact that sin has a way of compounding itself. For one single sin has a way of multiplying itself until finally you find yourself being enveloped into a lifestyle of sin. That on your own and through your power, you will find it almost impossible to break free of it. The simple act of adultery on David's part and on the part of the wife of Uriah led to Bathsheba becoming pregnant by King David. And in order to cover up his wrongdoing, David tried to have Uriah take the blame by having Uriah return home from his war battles and having him sleep with his wife. Uriah would have nothing to do with that. And he would be given, he felt that he would be given special treatment for he felt that his men could not share what he was enjoying, then he didn't want to be a part of any special treatment, even if it came from the king himself. So that was when King David had Uriah killed. But then God sent a mighty and disciplined man to expose King David's sin. And in 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, and the 7th through the 18th verse, it reveals to us the Lord's message for David. I chose you to be king of Israel. I kept you safe from Saul and even gave you his house and his wives. I let you rule Israel and Judah, and if that had not been enough, I would have given you much more. Why did you disobey me and do such a horrible thing? You murdered Uriah by having the Amorites kill him so you could take his wife. Because you wouldn't obey me and took Uriah's wife for yourself, your family will never live in peace. Someone from your own family will cause you a lot of trouble. And I will take your wives and give them to another man before your very eyes. 
He will go to bed with them while everyone looks on. What you did was in secret, but I will do this in the open for everyone in Israel to see. Nathan also said, you showed you didn't really care about what the Lord wanted. He has forgotten you and you won't die. That is, God has forgiven you and you won't die, but your newborn son will. And the Lord made David's young son very sick. So David went, into, went without eating to show his sorrow, and he begged God to make the boy well. David would not sleep on his bed, but spent each night lying on the floor. His officials stood beside him and tried to talk him into getting up, but he would not get up or eat with them. After the child had been sick for seven days, he died. And David became painfully aware of a divine truth of God that the wages of sin is death. Sometimes the consequences of your sins may affect the ones that you love the most. And although David had to spend the rest of his life indirectly paying for his sins, with peace being taken away from his family and his country, you could say that King David was extremely blessed despite these inconveniences. Now I want to remind you that I don't want to seem to minimize the seriousness of King David's sins of adultery and murder, but in my opinion, the thing that saved King David, that kept him from getting the full blunt of God's wrath and God's rejection of him, was that when he heard the word from the prophet Nathan, he realized that his sin had been discovered by God, and if he did not ask for God's forgiveness, then eternal damnation and eternal banishment from God's presence would be his fate because God is a holy God, then unrepentant sin cannot remain in his presence. And for King David, this message from the prophet Nathan may have been David's final chance to get right with God, or else God would carry out his final judgment upon David, which was revealed earlier in the first chapter of Romans and the 28th verse. When they refused to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their evil minds and let them do things that should never be done. David came very close to having himself being turned over to a reprobate mind by God. That is, if David had rejected God's plea for repentance and forgiveness of his sins. You must believe that God has more wisdom and understanding than you do. God knows what's best for your life. It's important that you come to God now with all of your heart, forsake your sins, and place your entire life at his feet. For we are instructed in the third chapter of Proverbs and the fifth through the seventh verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not upon thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Yes, the Lord knows what's best for your life and my life. When you truly give all to God, he will forgive us. And the peace that you will receive will be the evidence that God has forgiven you of your sins. The peace you will receive from God will make you free. A newfound freedom that was made perfect by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you can receive eternal fellowship and salvation from God right now. If you are willing to
take this step of faith of simply lifting your hands with me and repeating these words. My Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ and I come repenting of my sins and asking for your forgiveness. Father, I realize that I have fallen short of the goal you have set before me. But Father, I want to turn my life around right now. For I'm going to confess with my mouth what I truly believe in my heart, that Jesus Christ is your son. A son who went to that Roman cross some 2,000 years ago and willingly allowed himself to die for me, that I can become a part of your family with my acceptance of him as my Lord and Savior. And I'm doing that right now. And Father, I want your Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me down the path you want me to follow. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it willingly. And Father, I love you and I thank you for not giving up on me, but waiting patiently for this day when I made the most important decision of my life of accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You have made God extremely happy with your acceptance of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you are now a part of the family of God and most importantly, you have received eternal salvation. And our God loves you, and he cares about you. God wants to provide you with that miracle that you've been praying for. He knows exactly who you are and where you are and your needs. All that's needed on your part is for you to come to him in faith and trust in him and in his ability to meet your need with a special miracle that's designed just for you. Lift your hands with me. Heavenly Father, I and thousands and thousands of other people throughout the Miami Valley, we're lifting our hands, praising you and thanking you in advance for answering our prayer. You are aware of each person's need. Whatever they need, they're presenting their supplications to you right now. I'm asking, Father, that you confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And we believe that you will answer our prayers instantaneously. And Father, I promise not only I, but thousands of other people throughout the Miami Valley, we will be careful to give you the praise and the honor for that miracle. And we thank you in advance. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. Yes, God heard your prayer, and God has answered your prayer with a special miracle that's designed just for you. And all that's needed on your part is for you to lift your hands and begin to praise and thank God for your miracle. Hallelujah. I want to take this time to thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to write to us, we would love to hear from you. You can do so by writing to David Woods, Post Office Box 2102, Dayton, Ohio, 45401. On behalf of myself and my sons, David and Devin Woods, we'd like to remind you to read your Bible every day and then pray. And may God bless you and your family.